in today's video, I'm going to be showing y'all how to replace your old, outdated iDrive unit for this 2023 CarPlay unit. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into installing this. And so adding this unit is going to give us full CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility with our stock iDrive unit. So we're going to have the ability to take text, calls, look at the map while we're driving, listen to Spotify, change the wallpapers up, and really modernize the interior of this car. The stock iDrive unit does not look bad at all. The screen quality is actually pretty good, but the software is very limited. So yeah, guys, let's go ahead and modernize our E90s iDrive and update it to look like a completely new generation car. So the first thing we're going to do is stick the key in the ignition. We need to throw our shift knob into drive because once we go to remove the radio and all this stuff, we're going to need all that space to bring the radio forward. From here, we want to make sure we go ahead and pull the parking brake all the way up to lock it into place. Unplug our negative terminal with a 10 millimeter socket. That way there's no power to the vehicle and nothing short circuits. Remove our wooden trim piece using a plastic pry tool. Don't use anything metal because you don't want to damage this up. Jam our plastic pry tool in right here. Then we can just leverage up. Bam. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is go down to the other side. And the best way you want to come about this is get your plastic pry tool in right under here or on the side. Grip your fingers on this portion and pull out. Just be careful because you don't want to rip the trim out too aggressively because that's where our push start connection is and all of our AC wiring right there. And then right here is going to be the connection, our push start button. And showing you guys right here, these two little crimps, you're going to push in and back this out. And then right here, we're going to have two connectors. They're simply going to pull back out of place just like that notate the longer one is going to go on top the shorter one on bottom and then now from there our wooden trim is removed go ahead and put this off somewhere to the side to where you don't damage it so now that our wooden trim is removed the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is remove this ac trim panel right here and this panel comes straight out just be sure to pull from both sides yeah bam just like that our ac trim panel is now pulled out of place we're going to go ahead and start disconnecting these connectors. So we're gonna depress the portion here. That clips out. Same thing here, we're gonna depress the clip. Slide back, that's out. And then right here, we went ahead and depressed both of these clips. And now this ribbon cable will slide right out. And with these wiring harnesses here, be extremely careful not to lose track of these because if you do and you let these get buried in the back, you might accidentally reinstall this entire unit with these still back there and then you'll have to pull everything back apart. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is remove this plastic trim piece right here. This piece can feel very flimsy and can snap, but it's surprisingly very durable. Don't be afraid to use some force. Don't disconnect this ribbon cable. Just simply put this whole trim piece off to the side. Now to remove this unit, we're gonna go ahead and remove our four Phillips screws. So we're gonna have one, two, three right here, and four right over here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and grab the unit and start to slide it out so we can access the connectors behind this. And now we have access to all of our cables and harnesses. First thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove this LVDS video cable right here and then this quad connector at the bottom. And this LVDS cable is gonna have a little tab you're gonna push in. There will be a bit of resistance. Then our quad connector is going to have that push tab and then that's gonna hold the latch into place. So once you push it in, this whole little latch mechanism is gonna swing upwards. And then from here, once it latches fully up, the harness and all the connectors, et cetera, will come straight out just like that. And then from here, what we're gonna go ahead and do is remove all of the other connectors with the same exact push tabs. And now that this is fully removed, let's go ahead and put this off to the side so it doesn't get damaged. From here, we're gonna go ahead and remove our shift knob because our CIC controller is gonna have to wire in. That way we're able to use this thing with the new CarPlay and Android Auto capability. Grip your shift knob with two hands, pull up firmly and be careful you don't swing up and slam your mirror. Sweet, so now our shift knob is removed. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our shift knob trim. Go ahead and get a nice grab in there to get some leverage and just pull upwards just like that. And we're just gonna put this off to the side. We don't actually have to remove it or remove any of the cables. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our center console's wooden trim piece. And the best way to remove this quickly and easily is grabbing right under here. You can use a plastic pry tool if you absolutely have no leverage, but usually you can grab right under here and pull up just like that. Go along these seams and make sure you unseat this trim piece completely. And now we have access to our iDrive controller. We're gonna go ahead and grab all the wiring harnesses provided from Beamer Direct. And we're just gonna 
make sure we have our two quad connectors isolated. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is unseat our fiber optic cables. There's gonna be a little push tab in here that we push up. This is what transmits sound and data all throughout the vehicle. Put our fiber optics cable off to the side right here. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab our bypass quad connector harness and install that with the stock side without the fiber optics cable installed. And make sure that our latch is fully pulled out because if it's pushed in and you just start mashing it together, you're gonna damage the harness. So make sure that our latch is in the fully open position. Here. Now we're gonna go ahead and latch everything together and now this harness is fully secured. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our other wiring harness. And this is not the one that was stock on the vehicle. This is the one that's attached, the one we just installed. And so this portion's where we're gonna install our fiber optics cable into in the same exact position with the green cable on top of the braided black. And it'll make an audible clicking noise once it's latched into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and do is route our CAN power cable down through the bottom side here, and it's gonna come out of our footwell located right here. This is where I routed it, the cable that's moving around. If we come around to the side, we can see it pulls out right over here. Go ahead and secure your aux cable. Make sure it doesn't fall back into all of the rest of the cables, etc. And it's already connected to the harness, so we're gonna route it underneath, straight into the glove box here. And then make sure all of our connectors are all plugged up. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this side of the wiring harness and plug in this connector here to our iDrive controller. And we're gonna go ahead and route this entire loom here all underneath the center console trim piece. And then now we're gonna go ahead and install the new one, just like that. And then go ahead and grab the OEM cable that was plugged into our iDrive controller. And there's gonna be a little connecting point here for it. Make sure you plug that in. Go ahead and reposition all of our cables in the rear. We went ahead and traced that wiring harness down underneath the center console trim along with the aux cable. So you guys can see here, the aux is plugged in. We don't have any cables or anything sticking out. So everything right now is still good to go. And now we're just gonna reinstall the center console trim piece. It's gonna be a tight fit, so just make sure you use a bit of force. And the best thing you can do is push forward and down on this trim piece. And you'll just have to bang it into place just like that to get the clips secured. Then you're gonna have to hit along as you go. And so now you guys can see we have all of our cables tucked underneath the center console trim. The aux cord is all flush. We have our connector plugged into the iDrive. That way it can talk to the CarPlay and Android Auto. And then we have all of our wiring harnesses pushed to the back. So everything looks flush as of now. Now we're gonna grab our blue LVDS cable and then we're gonna plug it in right here to our purple connection. Grab our other end of our LVDS cable and route it down underneath right here. You can see that the cable is routed down and then comes out the other way right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our OEM little purple cable and then the cable provided with the Beamer Direct unit is gonna slide right into place. Now we're gonna grab the other end of this purple cable and route it down underneath. And it's gonna come right underneath our kick panel, just like the other blue one. Now go ahead and take note, we're gonna have all three of these connectors routed down below to our lower kick panel. So make sure you have all three of these. And for the CIC model E90s, make sure one, two, three, and four all press down. Down is the on position. Don't touch five through eight. Now from here, go ahead and plug in these connectors. So we have our blue right here, LVDS purple and then we have can power right over there and then something you can do to go ahead and make sure everything works go ahead and start scrolling the iDrive knob and you'll see that the system is responding everything's scrolling around and works as it should now we're gonna go ahead and take our wi-fi antenna that's provided routed it right underneath the kick panel and plug it in right here where this blue connection is be sure to mount this to anything that's plastic not metal we're gonna go ahead and mount this right underneath this plastic trim piece something i've noticed right off the bat is the durability of this unit. It uses a steel frame, so you don't have to worry about it denting, getting dinged up. There's cooling vents off to each side to prevent overheating. So we can see we have durable steel on the outside. We have all these cooling slots allow for ample you know, air to get out. So overall, that's a win. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do to fully hide this unit is remove this bottom kick panel. It's just held on by two T20 screws. We're gonna have one right here and then one right here on this other end. And then once this panel is removed, we can basically completely hide this thing. It'll tuck right underneath. 
You could even use some adhesive tape on it to hold it in a place so it doesn't bounce around if you really wanted to. And we went ahead and removed that panel. We tucked that unit fully underneath. It's completely invisible from the driver's side and even the passenger side if you're sitting here. As you can see, everything is responding. We can move our iDrive unit and get into CarPlay, Android Auto, etc. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the smoothness and how modern this is gonna make our iDrive unit look. Now go ahead and hit connect mobile device on our iDrive unit. It's gonna appear as CarPlay 834-900, whatever it is, go ahead and hit pair. Then we're gonna hit allow on allow contacts and favorite sync. And we can see we're fully connected to our new CarPlay unit. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and hit use CarPlay. Cool, and then once you're connected, it should automatically throw you into CarPlay. But if it doesn't, that button right up here is gonna launch you into CarPlay. So go ahead and select it. And you can see out with the old, dingy, crusty, that had limited capabilities. Now we're in full Apple CarPlay. And the good thing is BMW did not use bad screens from the factory. I mean, honestly, it still looks high resolution, looks great, especially with all the color from Apple CarPlay. And you can see we have everything Spotify. You can change your wallpaper, show album art. You're gonna have full Apple CarPlay and full Android Auto capability in a car that came out when CarPlay didn't even exist. And then just to show you guys the responsiveness of this unit, there is no lag to it. All the animations are very, very smooth and crisp. All the fonts over all the texts and things like that are very concise, they're very uniform. You don't have any font issues, any lag. Everything you can do on your iPhone, you can basically do on here. You have your messages, your phone, you can even order Panera if you wanted to. The stock navigation on iDrive is not great. It's clunky, it looks old. There's no color to the unit. It just looks very, very bland. And I want you guys to look at the perspective of you're driving your own car and you look down, you see your car play, you see your maps, you can interact with it, voice text back your friends, see incoming calls, and etc and really imagine this is your car this bumps your car up to looking years and years newer all of your steering wheel controls are going to work immediately you're going to be able to switch songs you're going to be able to turn on your ac and everything like you were before obviously switch sources all your volume keys are going to work this will use your stock microphone so you can still do phone calls you can still use hey siri commands voice text and everything like that overall i would definitely give this modification two thumbs up looks great makes the car look a whole generation newer there's no lag to the unit it's all uniform it's a fantastic upgrade for any of you e9x drivers out there it's an easy way to modernize your car with just a little bit of effort and still keep that oem design from the factory now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and put everything back together we're just slap the radio back in tuck all the cables neatly and yeah, everything else should be good to go. That is how you install the MMI box from Beamer Direct on your BMW E90, E92, E93, etc. But it's basically the same exact install procedure for whatever BMW you have. So we basically went ahead, made our interior generations newer, and we took advantage of this huge screen in the middle, adding CarPlay, Android Auto. Now you'll actually have maps, messaging, etc. while you're driving. If you like this video, go and smash that thumbs up. Link down below where you can get yours. And as always, thank y'all for all the support. We'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.